Hi. So I've been wanting to come on here and talk a little bit about having a closed heart. Um, when I came back from the retreat, I was telling people that one of the biggest things I found out there is just how closed my heart has been. And people were like, well, what does that mean? Um, so I just want to share because I don't really, I'm not making these videos because I'm trying to like be a coach or an instructor. I like to share these and make videos like this so that people will be able to relate because for me, one of the biggest things that sort of changed my life was just having the awareness. That's like the very bottom level of making changes. And it's like such an exciting part of your journey because once you have awareness, then your mind can just finally start to see why some of the things have been happening in your life. And it's like, it's definitely a bit of a roller coaster too, but for me, it's been life changing. So if I can reach people by making these videos, then that makes me really happy. And hopefully you will be able to make your life um, better by discovering yourself within you, what things that are holding you back. So closed heart, um, I like to think about it like, you know how they say with high blood pressure, it is a silent killer because people are walking around with it and they don't even know they have it, right? And they don't really have any symptoms and by the time they find out they have it, it's usually when things have gotten quite serious, there's like serious complications. Um, that's why they always say you should be having your blood pressure checked. Um, but similar to that, having a closed heart is the silent killer of your soul. So you could be walking around not knowing you have a closed heart, you don't really have any symptoms, and then you maybe find out after something more serious has happened. Um, so for me, if you watch like my videos further back, things have gotten pretty over the years had gotten pretty serious like my my depression was at a really really low point and me going to this retreat was like a last sort of last ditch effort and I was definitely at a serious point in my life and this is what has come from it now so <laughs> um it's pretty amazing if you just hang in there and you don't um give in too soon and give up because I'm telling you, like five, ten years ago, had I been knowing what I know right now, after the, like in the last month, there is no way I would have like thrown a towel. <laughs> so let's talk a bit about having a closed heart. Um, I think it kind of starts from a period of time, um, a string of episodes that happen that make your heart feel like it needs to protect you. So, if you think about, like, homeostasis, right? It's the body's way of regulating back to um, a level of normalcy. Would that make sense? <laughs> I'm really bad at explaining these things sometimes. But, so, think about your heart. It wants to be healthy and protect you. So, when you've been hurt, sort of, like, over and over again then your heart is like trying to protect you from getting hurt again and you don't ask it to do this but its way of doing this unfortunately is by pushing people away so here's like you will if you have a closed heart here's just like a few things you might be feeling like you you don't feel safe around people um you can't trust people and if you're in a relationship, maybe you have like one foot out the door, um, you're you're guarded and is it, you don't even have to be in a relationship to be guarded. This could be in general around people. Um, you can't accept things that when they're going good, like say things are finally going good for you. You're like, no, <laughs> it can't be possible. And your heart's just like, um, something's wrong here. And it's like, I'm going to try to protect you by uh, pulling back maybe. You might pick a fight with your partner or you might cancel plans with somebody that you, you, you signed up to do something and you don't go because you're, 
you're like, I'm not going to go get hurt by that person. Um, you resist deep connections with people. That's a pretty big one. I, I'm, I'm pretty bad for that. So these are kind of some things you might be feeling if your heart's already shut down. Um, crazy thing is like too, you will keep, you will keep attracting the same types of people. Um, so if you put out the energy that you have a closed heart, then you're going to attract people with the energy of an unconscious and closed heart and people who are unaware of their own problems and people who can't commit and they're afraid of commitment. Um, people who maybe are only interested in a physical connection because they aren't conscious enough to have a soul connection. Um, but it's like so ironic because I was out there thinking like, why do I keep attracting all these people, right? Why do I keep attracting people who only want physical or they're shut down, it can't be emotional, um, they don't want commitment. And it's like, well, I was unconsciously aware that like my own heart was closed. So therefore, I couldn't see that I was attracting people who were in the exact same boat. It's like a mirror effect, right? They say when you when someone triggers you, it's like looking in a mirror and they're mirroring back to you unhealed that parts of yourself. So while I was complaining about meeting all these people, it's because I didn't even know myself. That's what I was talking about with um, the high blood pressure. I was like unaware that I had this silent sort of killer of my soul going on. So this is why I was attracting people that were so wrong for me because they were trying to mirror back to me things that I really needed to see um, in order to finally break the pattern. Um, it's so crazy when you think about it, like this is the universe's way of trying to slap us in the face by giving us these like constant reminders and you're just like, but instead we turn it around to being a victim, like why does this keep happening to us? <laughs> but then finally, broke pattern and I'm, I mean it sucks in a way that it took so long because there's definitely people out there that could have been good for me maybe but because I was so shut down I just couldn't accept their love I couldn't accept anything from them because even though I didn't know my heart was just crying so badly to save me <laughs> so I want to talk just briefly about how it started for me when I was younger, like grade one to six, I had a string of friends who were really inconsistent. Like they were my best friend outside of school. And then um, at school, they maybe they, they didn't want anything to do with me all of a sudden. And they were like joining in with other people to bully me. And then outside of school, they wanted to be my friend again. Um, very much back and forth. Uh, and then as a child, I know it doesn't seem like a big deal right now, but this happened with multiple like friends at that time because I wrote about it in my journal. I have like a little book from grade one to six um, and I wrote about it. One day I'm really sad because my best friend doesn't want to hang out with me or talk to me. And the next day I'm really, today was great. I play games with my best friend. Like as a child, you're not able to understand why somebody is choosing to only like you when it's convenient for them. Um, it's like more simple when you're a kid, right? It's either they love me or they hate me. And your brain does not understand like, why somebody is choosing to be nice to you in one minute and then bully you the next. Like, it's just, it can't comprehend that. <laughs> Instead, it turns it around and it makes it seem like you're not good enough. And all the stories we started to tell ourselves, you're not worthy enough and it makes you feel like you're not accepted. So I did, by the time I got a bit older, grade uh, seven and eight, I stopped really trying to make new friends. Like luckily I had some close ones, but I was starting to be afraid of meeting people because I was afraid of like how they would react to me. Like would they like me or would they not? Like, you know? Um, and then my first boyfriend at that time, he, we went on a Quebec trip with the whole class and this is how he broke up with me, just like the movie Harry Potter and the owl or the bird that flies messages around. Instead of a bird, he used people. So we were eating dinner in a dining hall and he was like at a table with some friends 
one end and I was at another end. So he tells the person next to him to break up with me, who tells the person next to them, to next to them, to next to them, and so on. So by the time it gets to me, um, everybody already knows. They're staring at me, grinning, smirking, laughing. It was like so humiliating. Um, so then I started to shut down even more. More experiences like this in high school with just shitty um, people, really. It was men mostly, boys. <laughs> who were treating me really badly. And then I had a photographer that I did my high school co-op with who turned out to be a creep. And I was only 17 and he was like 40. And he tried to sneakily get me to do a nude photo shoot with him um, after I finished my co-op there. He sent me an email and used very like terminology that wasn't straightforward about what he wanted me to do. Um, use my love for photography to my advantage, disadvantage, I should say. Um, had me come into the studio, in the studio under the impression that I was doing a photo shoot that was not at all what he had planned. And so, of course, like I started to shut down after all these little events, right? And I think I'm trying to timeline and pinpoint when my heart started to was fully was closed. I think it was already closed when I went to college. So that's like, um, the first time I went to college, we're talking like 11, 12 years ago. So it's a long time, right? And all the things that followed after that, I just, that would be another video. <laughs> I mean, the things that happened when I had a closed heart, the people I met, um, unfortunately, it's too bad, but it's okay now. And I have some good ways for you to open up your heart, which I'm still working on. Um, Hopefully this isn't going to run out of time, so I'm going to try to go through it quickly. You are going to want to meditate. Like, I never thought I'd be somebody that meditates, but you want to meditate every day, even if it's like 10 to 15 minutes. You, you will be amazed, and just like the more awareness you start to have, um, do daily affirmations that are revolve around your heart center. Like, I love myself unconditionally. Um, I am infinite love and light. Um, I am accepting of love. I deserve love. Um, uh, some, some, what else? Uh, stop isolating and go out to activities. Give people the opportunity. Like, don't just immediately be like, they're not going to like me. Like, I'm still working on this. Um, do you, don't have an, just don't have a judgmental attitude. I'm reading my notes really quickly. Um, accept love from people. And I'm going to share some resources down below because I think this little, the more important part is sort of rushed right now on how you can work on opening your heart. So I will definitely like put a bit more of a note on that below. All right. Hope this was helpful.